Happy Sunday, everyone. Welcome to Bariatrics and Tips. I am Michelle Giesen, your hostess with the Moses, back for another round of live recipe demonstrations. Thanks so much for joining. I hope you enjoy the show together um, today and our time together. I'll tell you, I look forward to this every week. So, you know, I say it every week, but it's totally true. Um, you know, one thing we have in common is that we have all had weight loss surgery or we're gearing up to have weight loss surgery. And even if you're not, even if you're just trying to achieve overall wellness and balanced nutrition, or if you're trying to live your life with diabetes or whatever condition you're in, we are all here for one purpose. And that's to make sure that we live large while we cook and eat small and find flavor in everything that we do. Thanks, Melissa, I appreciate it. Um, but you know what, just because we're given this tool doesn't mean that we have to be deprived of eating well. Food is a huge part of our lives, whether we like it or not. And it's in so many areas of our life. Um, it's in work and potlucks and religion and holiday celebration and birthday celebrations. And food is just everywhere we look. And so the secret really is to um, eat to live, not live to eat. And hopefully by the time we're done today, you'll have another few tricks and tips in your arsenal in order to do just that. So remove the word deprived from your vocabulary because there's no reason you should have to walk the face of this earth after bariatric surgery or during your wellness journey feeling deprived. You know, life isn't meant to be spent wishing that we could have this or that. We can have fun we, we can have fun with food. We can experiment. It is so much fun to be in the kitchen. It, it's an adventure. Grocery shopping should be an adventure. You know, you're on your own wellness journey and the kitchen and the grocery store are repeated attractions. And so I really, really hope that you are as empowered and as inspired as I am to make a dish that you've either never tried before or one that the family loves over and over and you just take so much pride in giving to them. But either way, whatever the scenario is, it's just, it's fun to use your resources to create something that both makes you feel um, satisfied, not deprived, and like you're indulging, okay? Um, this is our second chance. This is our second chance at life to live. It was our rebirth day. Bariatric surgery or a wellness awakening is a rebirth of sorts. And so celebrate your rebirth day with pride. Um, for those of you that don't know, I had gastric bypass surgery April 22nd of 2015. So I'm just over six years out. I have lost and kept off 130 pounds. Um, I enjoy celebrating my rebirth day. I love making food and cooking uh, an adventure. Um, and I've worked hard during this journey. It's had its good times, it's bad times, and it's really ugly times. Um, but do I have any regrets? No, I have none. Um, but what I do have is insight. And I'm only human and I make my share of mistakes. But the difference now is I know how to isolate those behaviors and I know how to hop back on that bandwagon um, and, and make sure that I am striving for my own wellness. Um, you know, I want to make sure that we live large and cook small and find flavor in everything that we do. And I've dedicated myself and our group page and our Facebook Live recipe demonstrations to doing just that. And it's worth the time and the effort because I know I'm worth the time and the effort. And if you're tuning in, it's because you're worth the time and the effort too. So there's lots of exciting things we've got going on through Bariatrics and Tips, the Facebook page. Um, hopefully, since you are tuning in, you are well aware that we outgrew our old space and we are in our new and improved home. Um, and so if you are still a member of the private group page, please make sure you're telling everyone that they can certainly keep their membership in that page, but all the recipes and tricks and tips and recipe demonstrations are going to be on this public group page. Um, it better serves the vision of bariatrics and tips. Like I said, we have a lot of really exciting things. 
on the horizon and we really want you along for the ride. So please make sure you share this public page with everyone that you know um, and, and then we'll go from there. Um, you can like us on all social media, so not just Facebook, but Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Snapchat, and TikTok. Um, we will be utilizing those more and more as time goes by, but right now we want to make sure that our likes and follows um, go as high as we can. Our first goal is 2,500, so we've got a ways to go, but you can certainly do your part to, to help, and thank you in advance for doing that. Um, remember, if you need specific medical guidance or have any questions about um, anything, any of the nutritional information you see, you can certainly ask me, but please don't hesitate to include your surgeon and or your dietitian into the mix. They are the pros. They know what's best for you. Um, and I'm just ready to move forward. Let's move forward right now and share our Sunday Spotlight. I've got someone that I want to introduce you to that I have, um, I just met her a while back. I don't even know how long it's been. Veronica, if you wanna chirp in, how long have we been members of our um, local um, support group? Um, but Veronica Dipati is the source, uh, or the spotlight today. Um, she's one of my local friends. She um, just started her bariatric journey. I'll tell you a little bit more about her. Um, three months, she says. I have known Veronica three months and I have grown to adore her. Um, she has an amazing outlook on life. She has a smile that lights up the dark and you can tell that her journey has completely transformed her thus far, even in three months. So let's talk about Veronica. I've got a picture that I wanna show, with you, show to you after, um, but Veronica's 47 years old. Um, but she also says it's 20 according to the new AARP commercial. So I'm on board with that because I'm still a bit older than you. <laughs> so yay, good job, Veronica. Um, her rebirth day slash surgery date was June 23rd um, of this year. So, you know, not too, not too long ago, um, she had the vertical sleeve. Her highest weight was 330. Her, star, her surgery weight um, was 320 and her current weight is 284. So she has rocked it out um, just in you know, a few short weeks. Um, Veronica says that all of her life she's been overweight. She was an only child and she thought it was normal to be overweight because both sides of her family were overweight. So she really thought nothing of it. Um, she used food as a crutch. She was a latchkey kid and often by herself and it made it easy for her to eat and eat um, and then hide the evidence before her parents got home. And Veronica, you like you spoke to me when you said that because I did the same thing. I mean, I babysat my sister and the loaf of bread babysat me. So rock on. I totally understand where you're coming from. Veronica says through adult life, she tried every diet, every shake, every pill, every fad, um, and lots of prayer. And here she is now at her rebirth with a real chance to finally write a new chapter in her own book of life. Um, she's grateful for a wonderful and supportive husband, a daughter she says is her mini her, <laughs> um, great family, church support, friends, a personal trainer, and her local support group peeps who help believe in her, and we do. We are, we are a pretty great group, aren't we, Veronica? And anyone else who's watching, um, from our group, we, we are a pretty special breed. So if I do say so myself, so thank you for that shout out. Veronica also says that this is a journey of self love with weight loss sprinkled in for good measure and truer words have never been spoken. Weight loss is really the byproduct of taking control of your life um, and this journey to wellness and, and using gastric um, bypass or sleeve in Veronica's case um, as, as a tool. Um, and the weight loss is definitely a, a really great um, effect of it, but she's learning so much um, mentally is what she had shed, showed too. So thank you so much. I'm gonna come around to the camera. I'm gonna show you Veronica's before and current picture. She is a warrior and truly amazing. And I am very, very proud of her. Good job, Veronica. You look amazing and what's even more 
is that you look happy. I mean, your smile speaks volumes. And here, let me get, here I am, ha <laughs> ha. Um, so here's everyone. Yes, we love our bariatric support group. But here's Veronica. Thank you guys so much for tuning into the Sunday Spotlight. Veronica gets a Bariatrics and Tips logo magnet. I've already got that envelope addressed and the stamp put, the stamp put on there. So um, if you are watching and would like to be a subject of a future Sunday Spotlight, it's a done deal. You don't, all you have to do is send me a message. You can either send the um, group page Bariatrics and Tips a private message, or you can send me, Michelle Giesen, one directly. All I need is a short bio, some words of wisdom, maybe some things that you've learned along the way, and a before and current picture. If you're comfortable providing your stats, like Veronica did, please do. This is a huge no judgment zone. We, we all have different journeys, but the premise is the same. And all we want is to celebrate you. So um, thank you once again, Veronica. We are gonna move over to our recipe demonstration which is a fun one. I actually saw this um, online, a little, I think it might have been a TikTok clip. Um, it's called Zucchini Rollatini. And kind of think about the um, eggplant or the zucchini lasagna that I've made in the past. And this is kind of like a finger food edition of it. But the really cool thing is we are, I have modified it. I have bariatricized it to fit and accommodate our uh, live large and eat and cook small um, credo of sorts. So um, I'll review. I've got some tips and tricks to give. I've got the ingredients to run down for you. And then I actually have it in the oven. I put it in the oven right before I hit the live um, button. And, and so it'll come out and it'll be amazing for all of us to see. I'm very excited. And in true Michelle fashion, I have not eaten lunch yet, so guess who's going to be hogging on this? This girl. So anyways, zucchini rollatini. Um, couple, a couple of tips. The, the recipe calls for large zucchinis. And um, I know that there have been some tricks and tips this past week that talk about the size of the zucchini. I think it's called size matters. <laughs> but, you know, typically smaller or medium-sized zucchini are much tastier. This one actually calls for a large zucchini. I honestly don't think that we are gonna be sacrificing taste just because of the ingredients that accompany the zucchini rollatini. Um, but I just wanted to, that was the first thing I thought of because I made that size matter slide and then I'm like, okay, I have to completely contradict myself and, um, and do something with a large zucchini. And funny enough, I went to the grocery store to prepare for um, this recipe and all they had were small zucchini. So I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. So yesterday morning I um, went to the farmer's market and they had, I think I got a zucchini. I should have taken a picture of it. It was probably this big, this long and that wide. It was huge and it cost me a dollar. So I was pretty stoked. Um, so you wanna look for two large zucchini that are pretty thick because you want to be able to make a meal out of it. Or if you're not making a meal out of it, then I guess disregard that trick and tip. Um, slicing is really easy with a mandolin, so they're all the same thickness. And this is gonna be part funny and part serious. Watch your fingers, okay? Because I got cut bad. <laughs> In fact, I took the tip of my finger off and a little bit of nail for good measure. Every time I use this freaking mandolin, I get hurt. And I didn't even realize that I had sliced my finger until the zucchini turned red. So this is true blood, sweat, and tears recipe. If you're using a mandolin, please be safe, please be careful. Um, it was really stupid and I can hear my husband laughing his butt off. He's sitting on the chair watching me. If I could turn the camera to face him, I would, and then you would see him flip you off. So I won't. Um, <laughs> and there he is laughing. So at any rate, moral of the story, watch your fingers. Um, I did this yesterday and it was still bleeding this morning and it ain't pretty. <laughs> All right, so the original recipe called for a 13 by nine baking dish. 
I have revamped this recipe um, in, in an effort to live large and cook and eat small. I have reduced it to an eight by eight square baker. And I think you're gonna see when I take it out of the oven that it works perfectly fine. Um, I used 18 long strips of zucchini and I've got them to show you. Um, you know, if you're really good at slicing them yourself, they need to be thin, but not paper thin. And they need to be thick, but not too thick because you wanna roll them up. Um, and so um, I used 18 slices of zucchini and I do have some left. So the recipe calls for two large zucchini. You might have some left over, but if you have some left over, it's just a great precursor to another recipe where you can make lasagna using the zucchini strips as your noodles. So let me take a look, let me show you. I'm gonna come around too so you get a good close look um, at this. These are the strips of zucchini that I used with the mandolin. And so you can see how, how, look at my arm and you can see how long, they're like the length of one section of my arm. And they're nice and, um, you know, hearty. They're not thin, but they're not super thin. And the main thing is, is you wanna be able to roll them up because eventually the zucchini rollatini is going to look like this. All right, so I've got, I mean, it's like, I've got many of them left. So you could totally use this and make like a, a zucchini lasagna recipe with the rest of it. Um, they are pretty pretty hearty and pretty good at staying in the refrigerator for a little bit until you need them. But you could also um, put them on the grill or put them on the broil, broiler with um, some Parmesan cheese and maybe some garlic and you can have them um, to accompany any any dinner you choose. So just a few suggestions. It's definitely not gonna go to waste in this household for sure, okay? Um, we'll go through the ingredients. We again need one to two large zucchini. Zucchini is the plural. If you saw the slides from um, last week, it's not zucchinis, it's zucchini is the plural. Um, you need a half a teaspoon of kosher salt and uh, black pepper to taste. You need a cup of your favorite marinara sauce. For this recipe, I actually used pizza sauce, and my favorite pizza sauce is the Meyer brand pizza sauce. It's pretty natural, low in calories, um, and I love it, so that's what I used. I wanted it to be a little bit thicker than like spaghetti sauce. Um, all right, and so one large egg, two thirds of a cup of part skim ricotta cheese, one of my favorite bariatric ingredients. I love ricotta, and I can eat it right out of the container too. Um, a half a cup of grated Romano or Parmesan, or you can mix it up a quarter cup each, however you want to do that. A quarter cup of fresh chopped basil, and the fresh is the operative word. Um, when I was at the farmer's market yesterday, bought myself some basil, and all I do is keep it in a thing of water, and it stays pretty fresh, and I can use it for the upcoming week, and it smells absolutely delicious. So that's our basil rant. Um, a garlic clove minced, three quarters of a cup of shredded mozzarella cheese. You can shred your own or you can buy from the grocery store, whichever you prefer. And then finally, um, I actually fortified our recipe with two scoops, two scoops of Gene Pro protein powder. And the reason I use the Gene Pro um, in a lot of recipes is because it's kind of a no brainer. Um, I have, um, it's low in calories, first of all. Low in calories, high in protein. Nailed it just based on that premise. Um, but it's very versatile too. It's very good to cook with because I can actually make the Gene Pro into a syrupy consistency and then I can cook with it or I can put it in um, straight in the mixture like I did here today. Um, and if you're intrigued by the syrup kind of thing, I know on our group page, I have a video posted on how to make the Gene Pro syrup. I also have it on my YouTube channel too, okay? So that's the ingredients list. Um, you're gonna preheat your oven to 400 degrees. You can see that I have mine at 400. Um, you're gonna start spreading the a quarter cup of the marinara sauce on the bottom. I actually sprayed the bottom with cooking spray as well, just because old habits die hard and I just wanted to make sure um, I use that eight by eight baking dish. If you end up making this for a larger group, you can feel free to upgrade. Again, I'm just trying to cook as small as I can. 
Um, you're going to cut the zucchini lengthwise, just like how I showed you. Um, so you have these strips of zucchini. Um, again, if you're using a mandolin, watch your fingers, please. Um, you want to season both sides of the zucchini with salt and pepper to taste and even spray olive oil. I have a, um, a mist a mist sprayer. So what I do is I literally had the zucchini sprawled out here on the kitchen counter. I salt and peppered them and then I sprayed the zucchini and then I flipped it over and I sprayed it again with the olive oil. Um, just, you know, in an effort to find more flavor. That's what I did. Um, you want to, it, it's recommended the recipe recommends it, and so I did it this way, and I highly recommend it. You want the zucchini to be pliable, but you don't want it cooked through. So you figure one to two minutes on each side, um, and you want to grill them. And I actually have this grill grate on my stove that, that simulates an outdoor grill, and I love it so much. And so that's what I grilled them on, and I was able to achieve those really nice grill marks. Um, so you want, you want to do that one because it just tastes good and the grill marks make it look pretty um, but the other thing that that does is it helps draw out the water and so does the salt um, helps draw out the water because there's such a high water content in the zucchini you'll see when i pull it out of the oven it's probably going to be a little liquidy on the bottom and that's okay um, but as you're doing that, then you want to, in a medium bowl, you want to combine your ricotta and your egg and your cheese and your basil and your garlic, Gene Pro, and then salt and pepper to taste. Um, I did taste mine. Oh, it was so delicious. And then you'll spread um, the ricotta mixture, about a tablespoon and a half, onto each strip. Um, and what I did was I used a small scooper. Um, and then I put it in the middle and then I used a knife and I kind of just spread it along the zucchini like butter and then I rolled it up. And when you roll it up, you want to um, put them seam side down on the baking dish, really similar to when you're making a burrito. They always say to put it seam side down. This is the same concept. Um, and then you, I was able to get 18 slices into that eight eight by eight and they were all lined in a row. I think I did three rows of five, three rows of five and then I did, um, then the long way I did three more and I probably could have stuffed a fourth one in there too. So whatever works. Um, but what you're gonna do is when you have those seam side down on your baking dish, you are gonna put a tablespoon of the marinara sauce on each one, just like a dollop. And then once that's done, you're going to sprinkle a tablespoon of mozzarella cheese over each one, um, cover it with foil, and then bake it for 20 minutes until the cheese is hot and melted. Um, and I did not cover it, so now I'm very intrigued to see what it looks like. Um, as far as nutrition, when you get this recipe today on our Facebook page, the nutrition is per piece. And I did that deliberately because, you know, it, it, if I can eat two pieces, Maybe someone would only eat one, or maybe there's someone that would eat four. I don't know, but at least this way, now you know what the nutrition per piece is. So you're looking per piece at 59 calories, three grams of fat, three carbs, and seven grams of protein per piece. So you can make this an ideal snack or lunch or dinner. You can serve it with a side salad, a Caesar salad, um, so many different possibilities to serve this and you will have um, the chance to get that recipe. It will be posted at three o'clock today. It is two pages um, because I couldn't cram it all under one. And then at um, three, four, five, and six o'clock, I believe I have um, other tricks, tips, and I think I might even have a recipe about um, really quick and easy marinara sauce too because I could eat that stuff by the spoonful. So without further ado, let's get to this oven. Let's get our food out and see what we got contending with here. Turn off the stove. Oh, and it looks great, you guys. It looks super yum. I am going to, I can't tilt it. So you're gonna see me take the camera off the tripod, okay? This won't hurt, I promise. And let's see here. 
And that way I can at least show you. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna show you. There we go. All right, here it is. What do you guys think? Doesn't that look amazing? It's bubbling, you can kind of hear it too. Whoop. So you can see each dollop of sauce represents one zucchini rollatini. So there's five, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18. So I'm gonna put this back on the tripod now. Thanks, Veronica, yeah, it really does look delicious and I cannot wait. So here you're gonna see me, boo. And now I'm gonna put you back on the tripod and hope that I can still see what I'm doing here. And you can still see, can everyone see okay? It looks like you should be able to. All right, I'm coming around. And now probably the rule of thumb should be to wait a little bit before you serve it up, but I wanna be able to show it to you. And so I'm just gonna like section one out. Oh my gosh, it's perfect. It's so freaking perfect. Woohoo. So you have this little bite size. I'm gonna come around again. Look, isn't that amazing? All right, coming closer. Now open your mouth, open your mouth. What does it taste like? <laughs> Doesn't that look great? And then, all right, so I'm gonna do it. I'm going in. I'm gonna taste it on camera. Oh, and you can hear the dog coming too. We call him Mooch, even though his name is Lego. Lego, I'm not giving you this right now. It's too hot. It's probably too hot for me. Okay, you guys, it's amazing. It's super amazing. And if you're at all curious as to what I'm gonna be doing after the show, I'm gonna be eating this. So that's zucchini rollatini. Super easy, super fun as long as you don't cut your finger off. And um, super full of protein too. Really great snack idea to bring to work because you can even pop them in the microwave if you want. You can reheat them in the air fryer if you want. You could reheat them in the oven. Um, really, you can vary this to cater to your own likes. Um, if you don't like the basil, you don't have to put the basil in. You could add um, a little turkey sausage if you wanted. There's so much that you can do. This, use your recipes as like a benchmark and a skeleton and tweak them to accommodate you because you're the one that has to eat it. Um, and dinner tomorrow night, oh, awesome Veronica. That's what I like to hear. Veronica made the um, chicken pad thai last week too and she sent me a message about it, about how much not only she loved it, but about how her family loved it and how she had to stash some in the back of the refrigerator because her and her kids were fighting over it. So that's a great win. Thanks for sharing that. If you guys try these recipes, please let me know what you think. If you did something special with it, let me know that too because I like learning new stuff too just as much as, as I'm sure you do as well. So um, that is our demonstration today. Let's review a little bit about what's coming up on the horizon. Next Sunday, August 8th, we have egg and feta breakfast cups. So that's gonna be a great, great option, especially for those of you that are on the run and need to have a portable breakfast. This is gonna be a great find for you. Um, August 15th, veggie spring rolls. I know I've made those before and people have been very interested in the recipe, so I can't wait to share it. Uh, August 22nd, tuna and salmon patties. I know my husband's gonna be so thrilled about the idea of making fish in the house because he hates it. He's not listening, oh well. Anyways, August 29th, spinach frittata, another breakfast or brunch option. Um, September 5th, not really fried rice. I need not say more. There's no rice in my fried rice, but you are gonna feel like there is and you will not feel deprived in any way, shape or form. I assure you. <laughs> um, September 12th, Mongolian beef. This is one of my family's favorite meals. Um, and I have been able to bariatricize it and feel like I'm eating just right alongside them. Um, 
September 19th, spaghetti squash pizza cups. This is another game changer too because spaghetti squash is another great um, pseudo spaghetti hack where um, you can substitute it for your spiralized zucchini or whatnot. Um, and then finally, the last scheduled one that we have for now is pho pho, where I'm gonna show you how to make um, that beloved Asian soup recipe. And I have bariatricized it for all of our eating pleasure. So that's the scoop. That is the scoop. That's what I've got for you today. Hopefully you've got some great dinners and, and meals planned on the horizon. Um, I appreciate you taking time out on your Sunday to hang with me for a little bit. Uh, West Michigan has a beautiful day, although it rained for like five minutes a little bit ago, but now the sun's out again, so go figure. I always say Michigan is four seasons in five minutes, so nothing I really see surprises me. <laughs> so again, thanks for joining. The recipe will be posted at three. I hope you're enjoying the content of our Facebook page. Please make sure that you invite and tell everyone you know about it. And again, if you're interested in the Sunday Spotlight, I would love to hear from you, okay? Have a fantastic Sunday. Be well. Bye.